Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this new tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to use the TIP120 Darlington transistor, which is this component. Basically, we can use it to control a high voltage device that works with a voltage between 5 volts and 60 volts. In this video, we're gonna hook it up to the ESP32 microcontroller so that we can turn on and off the solenoid door lock. In the next video, we are going to create a password-based door lock system using the Bluetooth capability of the ESP32 microcontroller. Today, I will use the serial monitor. When we send the right password, we are going to open it up for five seconds, and then we can switch it off. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. As you can see, the TIP120 Darlington transistor has three leads. The left one is called the base, which we can use to control the other two leads. In this video, we are using the TIP transistor as an electric operated switch to turn on and off the solenoid door lock, but you could use it as an amplifier to amplify a signal. And that's not the purpose of this video. Actually, we are going to connect one of the GPIO pins, like the pin number two, directly to the base. And you have to add this ohm resistor, like 1K or 2K is fine. It is used to protect our pen from the high voltage power supply. Then we can take the negative lead and connect it to the emitter. The collector will go to the negative lead of the solenoid door lock so that we can control this connection. If we use digital right high, we can turn on the solenoid door lock and the digital right low will turn it off. Of course, you have to connect the positive lead directly to the VCC of the external power supply, 12 volts. Last but not least, you notice that I have added this diode. Basically, it is used to protect the circuit from the back EMF of these devices. The solenoid door lock has a coil inside it. The bad thing about this coil is whenever we turn off the solenoid, it generates a spike voltage that can damage our circuit, like the Darlington transistor. That's why we add this diode, which dissipates the back EMF of the solenoid. To prove that this diode is essential for our circuit, first I'm gonna use the power supply directly to power up the solenoid door lock. I have connected the red wire. Then I'm gonna turn it on by connecting the ground. And there you go, it opens. And if I release it, you see that we have that spike and that's the back EMF. We can avoid that by adding the diode. Make sure that the negative lead, which has this line, is connected to the positive lead of the uh, power supply as well as the solenoid door lock and the other side goes to the ground then I'm gonna hook up the positive lead and let's try to power it up again and there you go we didn't have that spike so the transistor is doing its job now we're gonna use the transistor to control this connection and turn on and off the solenoid door lock I'm gonna start by connecting the base through the ohm resistor and take a male to male jumper wire and connect it to the GPIO pin number two, which is this one. The negative lead of the power supply goes to the emitter, which is the right lead. And we can take another wire and connect the collector to the negative lead of the solenoid door lock. But I think I forgot one note about our circuit to make sure that everything is working. We have to connect the GND of the ESP32 microcontroller to the GND of the external power supply. We can use another jumper wire. The GND goes to the GND, which we have connected to the emitter. And that's pretty much it. Now we can move on to the code and control our solenoid door lock using the serial monitor. Let's start by creating a new variable for the base pin, which is connected to the pin number two. Then under the setup function, we have to add the pin mode and pass in the base pin because we need to use it as an output so that we can output a voltage. In today's video, I will use the serial monitor. Let's add serial.begin with a baud rate 115 to 100. If you have no idea about the serial monitor, I highly recommend you to watch one of my previous videos. I've talked about it in depth. Now we can move to the loop function and we can check if we have a message from the serial monitor using if serial dot available. In such case, we're gonna read it and put it inside the string. And let's call it read data equals serial 
dot read string, which returns a list of characters that we sent. Next, we can check if it's the right password. So I need to create another variable, which is the correct password. And it is string. I'm gonna call it pass equals, and let's use 0, 1, 2, 3. Finally, we can add another if statement to check if the read data equals our password, which is called pass. In such case, we will turn on the solenoid lock using the digital write command. We pass in the base pin and the high keyword. And let's wait for five seconds using the delay method, 5000 milliseconds. And finally, we can turn it off again using the base pin and the low keyword. And that's all for this sketch. You see, it's really simple. In the next video, we're going to use the Bluetooth module so that we can send this password using an app from the smartphone. Let's select our board. For me, I have an ODMCU32S that is connected to the port COM6. And hit upload. For some ESP32 boards, you have to hold down the boot key. And once it's done, we can open up the serial monitor using this icon. Then make sure that you are using the same board rate, 115200. And the no line ending option is set so that it doesn't add another line to the password. And let's try a wrong one and hit enter. Nothing happens because it's the wrong password. Then let's use 0, 1, 2, 3 and hit enter again. And there you go, it is working. So I think that's pretty much it guys for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next one.